please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome back to the Falcon Report. We are your hosts, Angela Fortuna. And Max Kutch. We have an informative story about ISIS coming up, but first, a few announcements. In March, students were nominated for the Falcon of the Month Award. This award is given to students who have discovered themselves through exploring new ideas. Nomination forms are in home rooms and the main office. The last day for nominations is Monday, March 16th. Juniors and seniors are invited to walk with Andrew Burbank as a part of the Burbank team on Sunday, May 3rd at 10 a.m. in the March of Dimes Walkathon. The goal is to raise $1,000 and you can contact Andrew at atburbank at gmail.com or in his home room 269. It's AP registration time. See the Falcon Flyer or school homepage for the registration link and breakdown of deadlines and fees. Registrations after March 16th will incur late fees. There are lots of job postings coming in to the College and Career Center every day. Any student who is interested in receiving the announcements via email should contact Ms. Gorman. The cafeteria has started to offer a breakfast menu. A selection of hot and cold grab and go meals are available from 7 to 8 every morning. Thanks, Angela. Hey everyone, if you're looking for more information on Ludlow Sports, the SEAC website has conference schedules and game locations. Also, you can call the number 203-255-7247 to reach the FLHS Athletics Information Line for updates on any upcoming Ludlow events. In other competition news, the SRC will be holding auditions for any musician or musical group interested in performing this year's national anthem during the Battle of the Houses. Sign up is in room 255 and you must be registered by Tuesday, March 10th. See Senor Franco in room 255 with any questions. This week we observe National R Word Campaign Day, which is meant to help raise awareness about the hurtfulness of the R word used in an offensive or derogatory manner. Teens for Tolerance would like to help create more accepting attitudes for all people all the time. Also, here, here at the Falcon, we here at the Falcon Report want to run a story on diversity at Ludlow in a few weeks. Students and teachers have so many fascinating backgrounds and stories, and we would love to share them with you. So please, if you or someone you know is very passionate about your heritage, then contact Ms. Krieger in the library to be featured in the story. On a completely different note, ISIS has been dominating international news lately, but do you really understand how this terrorist group was started? Angela Fortuna and Jenny Flood did a story about the roots of ISIS. The Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, better known as ISIS or ISIL, has been an international topic of news recently, sparking many opinions in the American people. ISIS got started by the power vacuum that was left in Iraq when the American troops left. ISIS has caused concern among many. Many wonder how ISIS came to power, but have more questions than answers. What's our role in this? What have we done to deserve this? ISIS started as an Al-Qaeda splinter group. ISIS got started when the Americans left Iraq. ISIS territory expands hundreds of square miles from Syria's Mediterranean coast to south of Baghdad, not including international borders. They have carried out public executions, crucifixions, and massacres. The group has taken over many areas of Iraq. They're doing these really public beheadings, and they're horrible, and it's not that I condone them, but by us playing into it, I think we have to be really careful because that's what they want us to do. Al-Qaeda is not a part of ISIS. In fact, they both differ extremely. ISIS has gained popularity with the youth through social media, while Al-Qaeda used more traditional recruiting methods. ISIS is even more brutal than Al-Qaeda. The reason they are such a big threat is because of how well-funded they are. They make a lot of money every day, and they use it for propaganda purposes. Probably just about as capable and now as strong as Al-Qaeda was. The leader is based more in Syria than Iraq. ISIS dislikes the U.S. because they feel there is a disrespect of Islam as a religion. The dislike of our country is a feeling and an opinion that ISIS has had for a long time. Ignore, I mean, they even look at Iraq and blame us. We created it and then we walked away. Despite what people know or think, many have opinions on ISIS and how we should handle their actions. Some feel the group is getting too much attention. I think that we're really blowing this situation up more than, more than we should. I feel that we should attack them as much as they attacked us. We're giving them all the attention that they want. Many people express their feelings toward ISIS, but the facts tell the true story about how the group formed. This has been Angela Fortuna reporting from Fairfield Ludlow High School.
If you're interested in learning more about ISIS, please register for a special talk being given on International Day. Mr. Puglis, the Social Studies Coordinator, will be going more in depth about the impact of the rising threat of ISIS as a modern issue. That's all, there, that's all we have for today. Have a great weekend.